One category of the people, the ignorant. Everybody is ignorant in one area or another. There is another category of people, though, the stupid. That is not correctable. It can be identified. It can be identified, but can be cured in only one way. Colonel Colt invented the way. A voluntary muscle in your body has one purpose. It's capable of producing force. What happens as a consequence of that has absolutely nothing to do with the muscle. What happens or fails to happen is entirely determined by, not by the force that's produced, but rather by the resistance that is encountered by the force that is produced by the muscle. If a muscle produces, hypothetically, a hundred pounds of force, a million pounds, whatever, if a muscle produces a hundred pounds of force and there is no resistance, then there will be rapid acceleration and a fast resulting speed of movement. On the other hand, if the muscle produces the same level of force and there is some resistance, not much, just some, any, then the resulting acceleration will be slower and the resulting speed of movement will be slower. The muscle is still doing the same thing, which is all it can do, which is to produce force, but the result will be different. As you increase the resistance, keeping the force constant, then the resulting acceleration and speed will go down in inverse proportion. When the resistance is almost equal to the force, then both the acceleration and the resulting speed of movement will be slower, very slow. When the resistance is equal to the force, there will be no movement. When the resistance is greater than the force, then the muscle will lengthen and you will have a, a lengthening of the muscle or a negative function. Now that is not an opinion, that is simply third grade grammar school physics. It applies to a muscle, an automobile, an airplane. When you get in an airplane and you advance the throttle and you may be producing 10,000 pounds of push, of thrust, the airplane will accelerate rapidly but it will not continue to accelerate forever. It will accelerate to a point where the resistance is equal to the thrust. And then the speed, the speed will thereafter remain constant. If you want to go faster, you're going to have to advance the throttles and give it more push. If you retard the throttles and reduce the thrust, then the airplane will immediately slow down. If you want to be fast, make the muscle as strong as you can and then you will be as fast as you are capable of being. For example, if you take a kid off the street and you test him in the bench press, and he can barely bench press 100 pounds, very slowly. That's his maximum positive attempt in that lift. It might take him three seconds moving from his chest until his arms are overhead. And if you give him 101 pounds and he cannot do it at all, you want him to move fast, give him 50 pounds. And he can slam it up there, maybe in a half a second. He will produce a hell of a lot more power with the 50 pounds than he did with the 100. He will move a lot faster. Now you take that kid and you train him. And you double his strength. And now he can do a bench press with 200 pounds. If, in fact, his strength is doubled, you will find that it takes him exactly the same length of time now to do the bench press with 200 pounds as it did previously with 100 pounds. If it took him three seconds with the 100, it'll now take him three seconds with the 200. If he could slam the 50 up there in a half a second, now he will be able to slam 100 up there in a half a second. That ratio goes up and down together. If you double his strength again through training, and now he can do a bench press with 400. If you make a film of it and count the frames, you will find that again it took him three seconds. Only now he's doing it with four times as much weight. Now initially, when he can only bench press 100, you found that he could slam the 50 up there in a half a second. Well, give him 200 now, now that he can bench press 400, 
and you'll find that he can slam the 200 up there in a half a second. That ratio goes up and down together. There is, however, a lot of confusion. Some of the terminology that is utilized in physics as it applies to a machine is simply not applicable to a human being. The term power, for example, is meaningless when applied to a human being. Power is the rate of work. Work involves movement. A muscle can work without moving and therefore without producing power. If you take a barbell and curl it to the mid-range position, can you stand there and hold it forever? Why not? You're not doing any work. According to the definition of work, you're not working. But that muscle is damn sure working. And because you're not working, you're not producing any power. Because power is the rate of work. Since there is no work, the rate of work is zero, then there's no power. If you want to produce the most power possible, then use a pencil for resistance. And you can produce a hell of a lot of power because you can move very fast. But when you reach your maximum level of, rep of resistance that you can move with, then in fact you'll move very slowly and there will be very little power. So there's a lot of misunderstanding about that.